opportunity to reflect on our own great goodness. Wait a minute, look at the couple standing here before us. We want to compare them to the quality of what we have. The truth is that every relationship is as unique as the individuals that are in it. But one thing holds true. For love to exist, for love to thrive, two people must allow the vulnerability of giving of his or her love to each other and receiving that love back in return. moment of every day must dedicate ourselves to one another. They are able to express themselves without fear of being judged or rejected. There is room in a relationship for both people to be unique individuals, but they are also free to surrender that vulnerability and true intimacy to be known and loved unconditionally. The love that you feel for one another is a seed that your parents planted long ago. When you were first born, you were in a bundle of diapers, screaming, crying, keeping them up endless nights for years. Their love for you has brought them great happiness and great challenges. And their love did not diminish, and they met those challenges. This is the great lesson that you can bring into your, into your marriage. As you embrace one another, so too do you embrace the families that have been brought together on this occasion. I saw that boy and held him in my arms, there was no doubt. That was my firstborn, that was my son, and I was honored and privileged to give him my name. And um, we've had an amazing run. Um, the life experience that, that you've enjoyed, the times we've shared, the challenges that we've overcome um, have been amazing. And to see you grow to the man you've become today um, makes a father incredibly proud. moment, you've been many things to one another. You met as classmates, you became friends, you became rolling partners on the mat, then you became lovers. Soon you shall say just a few words as you take a step across the threshold of life, and things will never be the same between you.
after you exchange vows, you shall say the, the words, this is my husband, this is my wife. Nothing is easier than standing here and saying these words. No, not true. This is tough. Everybody here loves you, and they will support you and help you through the times thick and thin. And to that, I only have one thing to say, and it's sage advice for everybody, is be, the heart follows behavior. So act loving, be loving, show love, share love, give love, and you will know love. Love each other always. But what that meant was that my brother never, ever let a single person pick on me or beat me down the way he did. So, <laughs> but I probably never told you this. To this day, I am the person I am because of you. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> That's all I got. Thank you. These are the hands that when wrinkled and aged will still be reaching for you. This is the point in ceremony where people usually talk about wedding bands. Bands being a perfect circle, having no beginning, no end. But we all know rings have a beginning. They're dug up as chunks of rock from the earth. Metals are liquefied in a furnace at over a thousand degrees. These hot metals are cooled, forged, worked by human hands, painstakingly polished. Something as beautiful is made from these rocks and elements. Love is like that. It comes from humble beginnings, made imperfect, made by imperfect beings. That's him, by the way. Uh, sorry. I think she made that clear already. It is the process of making something beautiful where there was once nothing at all. The contract of marriage is the most solemn and must not be taken into, must not be entered into lightly. But thoughtfully, seriously, and with a deep realization of its obligations and responsibilities. By the virtue of the authority vested in me as a deputy commissioner of civil marriages, it is my privilege to pronounce you married. You may seal your vows with a kiss. each other's holes, and they make the best. <laughs> that was not meant to be funny. <laughs> Honestly, KJ and Paige are perfect for each other. KJ, love you. You are stubborn, as all can stubborn can be. But, hey, I'm talking. But you are strong. You are loyal, and you have such a huge heart, huge heart, and Paige. You're such a sweet soul. You're always bubbly, always happy. You are just gentle and just a, a dedicated being, and I love that.
KJ, you are the center of my heart. You always will be. Uh, Paige, I am super delighted because you make my son better. And I really appreciate that about you. So thank you all for coming. Paige and I, yeah, growing up, uh, when she was growing up, we used to have a little thing we used to do, uh, swinging our hands back and forth. You remember that, Paige? Yeah. Huh? And I used to always look out for Paige. Paige was uh, my firstborn, and uh, I don't know, I don't know, it's hard to describe what's your firstborn. Um, the love that you receive in your firstborn was like, it's wholehearted. Um, so I always watched out for her. I always was there for her, tried to be there the best I could. Chased a lot of boys off, but then she moved to California. It was 1,740 miles away. And then she told me about this Kevin guy, this KJ. <laughs> and I thought, boy, I can't even meet him, jeez. But you know what? You weathered the storm. And you treated my daughter with respect and love and patience.